So I'm a teacher seven, Mr. Barry here. This is lesson number eight of the computer literacy course. Now we've been going over different things such as using our Google Drive, finding out how to better use our Chromebooks, and actually how to do a lot of different things with our Chromebooks and other types of computers. Now today we're going to be doing a quick overview of using Google Photos and adding how to do a animated gift that is how to take a series of pictures still pictures together and then make a motion picture out of them now with that you can use it in a meme or create and share it on social media after that we're going to be diving into Google Docs with two different projects there'll be a two-fold and a six-fold card projects now with these projects you will be able to customize them if you wanted to such as create a birthday or even anniversary cards out of them. With these projects, we're going to be practicing our skills in inserting and formatting tables, working with word art, inserting images, formatting columns, and working with the page setup. After we finish those two projects, we're going to dive into Google Docs add-ons and see what kind of add-ons we can actually add. And before I forget, if you're new to the channel, please hit subscribe and I would encourage you to click on the bell icon as well so you receive notifications when new videos come about. If you like these types of videos, I do like it when I see a thumbs up there. And if you give me a thumbs down, please let me know why and I'll try to improve the videos any way I can just to help you out there. And this is lesson number eight. So if you are new to the channel, there are seven other lessons before this one that go into more of the basics of computer literacy. Well, let's jump into topic number one. Hey, here I am in the Chromebook. Now, once you're in your Chromebook, you go to the home page and then click on the Google Apps. That's uh, nine squares up there. And once you click it, it reveals your Google Apps. And then we want to click on the Google Photos. Boom, your Google Photos opens up. Now, to create a custom animation like this, we need to go down to where it says for you on the left hand side of the screen. Once you click on there, you'll see these icons. And what we're going to do is we're going to choose the icon that says animation. So go ahead and click once on animation, and right away you're greeted with all of your images, and you have to select up to 50 of them. So you can select anywhere from 2 to 50 of them to make your animation. So you're going to scroll down to the beginning of your sequence there of photos and then click on them to select them. So I'm going to select mine. I actually have 43 images in this series. Okay, now once you've selected your images, go ahead and, and notice in the top left hand corner it's going to tell you how many you've selected. If you've gone over the 50, it won't accept anything after 50. Now once you have those, you notice above me there's a blue create. Go ahead and click on create. And then you'll be creating your image in a moment or two. This will be a GIF image by the way that you'll be able to use it on social media. You can download it and do other things with it. And I'll show you those in a second. Hey, there it is. Now it's going to create it and then present it to you like this. Depending on how fast your internet connection is, that's how long it'll take to create the image. So if you have fast internet, it creates it pretty quickly. And you're here you see me going around and I was just panning around the park near our home. Now if you like the image and you're happy with the results, you can share it. So if you notice, you have a triangle over there on the top right hand side. If you click on the triangle, you have options there to share it either in email, as a link, Facebook or other social media. And if you click on the three dots, you notice that you go and present it as a part of a slideshow. You can download it, add it to one of your albums, or even add it to one of your shared albums. And you do have the choice to archive this item and place it into the archive folder. So now you know how to make a custom animation. And so we begin the practice segment of lesson number eight. Here we have uh, using the Google Docs to make a two-fold and a six-fold cards with word art, tables, and columns. We're going to multiple columns as well as add-ons. Step number one, we want to open up the Chrome browser or your Chromebook. We need to log into your Google account. Step number two, 
click on the apps icon found on the bookmark bar or within the Google Docs homepage. Step number three, the app screen will load showing the apps that are installed on your account. Step number four, click on the drive icon. Step number five, the Google Drive app should load. Number six, the Google Drive will load as seen here. So notice it should say drive. And what we're going to be doing is we need to find the projects folder. Step number seven, double click the projects folder to open it. If you ever need to pause the video, simply press the spacebar. Step number eight, once it opens, you will see the documents that you have created in the past. Step number nine, Take your mouse and click on the new icon found on the left hand corner of the drive. 10. A menu will pop down. 11. Click on the blue Google Docs icon that looks like this. If you are asked to create this document in a shared folder, click on create and share. Step number 12. Google Docs should load on your screen like this. Step number 13, give the document a title, Project 8. You can do this by clicking up at the top and typing in Project 8. Step number 14, take your mouse, click on File, go all the way down to Page Setup, and click it. Step number 15, on Page Setup, click on Landscape, and change your margins to be 0 0.1, tab 0.1, tab 0.1, and tab 0.1. So remember your orientation is on landscape and all of your margins are 0.1. Once you've done that, click on OK. Step number 16, click on Format, go down to Columns, and now choose the second option here where it says we have two options there, or two columns. So click on two columns and you notice on the ruler it will be grayed out at the very top there. Step number 17. Now center your work by using the shortcut Control shift e or by using the center icon. Step number 18. Hit the enter key 12 times. After you've done that, step number 19, click on Insert, Drawing, and then New. Step number 20, the Drawings window will open as seen here. Step 21, click on Actions and Word Art. Step 22, and type in Created By and then key in your name. After typing created by and then your name, hit the enter key once. And remember, if you ever need to pause the video, simply hit the spacebar on the tab that's playing the YouTube video. Step 23, change the fill color to any color that you want. Step number 24, and change the font to any style that you want. I'm going to try that style there. Step number 25. After doing that, click on Save and Close. Step number 26. Now you'll have created by your name in this first column here, right in the center. Click on it once and then resize it by dragging the corners to the center. You need about half size there. Let go. And now you notice that it will be about two inches across. Step number 27. So click over here to the right hand side of your name and then hit the enter key 29 times to move the insertion point down all the way to the second column. There you go. Now once you see your insertion point on the second column, go ahead and stop. Step number 28. Now hit the enter key four more times. 
Step number 29, click on Insert, Drawing, New. Step number 30, the drawing window will open as seen here. Click on Actions and Word Art. Step number 31, key in Happy Birthday. And then hit the Enter key once. Step number 32, now for this, choose any color that you'd like for your birthday card. Step number 33, and any font that you want to use. There are many types available, and if you don't find the one that you want, you can click on More Fonts and find the one that you wish. Step number 34, once you've chosen the color and your font, click on Save and Close. Step number 35, hit the Enter key twice. This will lower the insertion point two spaces. Step 36, we need to insert an image of a cake. So click on Insert, go down to Image, and then click on Search the Web. Now key in Birthday Cake. 37, hit the Enter key once, and images of birthday cakes will be on the side here. What we need to do is find this cake here, and I'm going to click on it once to highlight it, and then double click it, and you'll insert that cake into your card. Now once that image is inserted into your card, take your mouse and click once on the cake. It'll become highlighted as you see here. Step 38, take your mouse and drag the lower corner blue square to the very center of the cake, and you resize it to about half its size. And take your mouse and click outside or to the right of the cake. It's no longer highlighted. Step 39. Hit the Enter key once. 40. And click on Insert, Drawing, New. Step 41. Now the Drawings window will open. Click on Actions, Word Art. Step 42. And we'll type in the name Ruta. R-U-T-A. Hit the Enter key once. 43. And again, we're going to choose a font style here. And choose any color that you want. Any color that you think Ruta would like. Well, I think she might like magenta. Step number 44. Click on Save and Close. There you go. Now this is the front page of your card and this is the back page of the card. Now the second sheet will actually be making the inside of the card. Step number 45. Hit the enter key enough times to jump to the second page. You know that when you see this line and you see your insertion point is below this line, you know you've jumped to the second page. Step 46. Now that you're on the second page there, hit the Enter key seven more times. Step 47. And click on Insert, Drawing, New. Step 48. And click on Actions and Word Art. Step 49. The dialog box will open and we need to key in step number 50 and we need to key in wishing you the best explanation mark after you do that hit the enter key once step 51 change the font to any style that you want and change the color there you may want to choose a color that you think Ruta would like again, maybe magenta again. Step 52, and then click on Save and Close. Step number 53. Now on this one, you notice it's over on one side, so we need to move it to the center. We can do that by clicking once on the Word Art image, and then choosing right here where it says Wrap Text. And now you can drag it right to the very center. There you go. 
now you've created your card and I will zoom out a little bit here so this is the back cover this is the front cover and this is the inside cover so when you print it out you'll see how it will look and if you wanted to customize this you would, you would add other images perhaps and other words to the front and of course you'd have a personalized message here on the inside cover. If you wanted to print this out it's control P or you'd click on the print icon and you would fold it along the center right here so that this forms the front and this forms the back and your inside cover would be here. Congratulations, you've completed the first project of lesson number eight. Now we will begin this second project. Using Google Docs to make a six-fold card with word art. Step number one, close off the tab holding your two-fold card. Step number two, click on the apps icon found in the bookmarks bar or within the Google's homepage. Step number three, the app screen will load showing the apps that are installed on your account. Step number four, click on the Google Drive icon. Step number five, the Google Drive app should load. Step number six, the Google Drive will load as seen here. Step number 15, double click on your projects folder to open it. Step number 16, once it opens you will see the documents that you've created in the past. Step number 17, click on the new button. Step number 18, a menu will pop down. Step number 19, click on the blue Google Docs icon as seen here. If you are asked to create this document in a shared folder, click Create and Share. Step number 20, Google Docs word processor will load as seen here. Step 21, give this document the title Project 9 by typing in the new title where it says Untitled Document and hitting the Enter key once. Step number 22, click on File, found near the top, and select Page Setup. The Page Setup window will open as seen here. 23, once you see the Page Setup window, change the margins to be 0.1 all the way down as seen here. 0.1, Tab. Point one, tab point one, tab point one. Step 24, after changing the margins, click the OK button once. Step 25, we need to insert a table. So take your mouse and click on Insert, and then go down to Table. Go across the little gray bridge, and we need a table that has three columns and two rows. So go across three and then down two. Once you see the three by two, go ahead and click it once and it'll insert a three by two table for us. 26, a table should appear within the document that has three columns and two rows. If you made a mistake, hit Control Z to undo it and try those steps again. Step 27, hit the enter key five times table should grow in size as seen here. Step 28. Insert an image of a castle by clicking on insert, then image, and then click on search the web. 29. The insert image side window should open on the right hand side of your screen as seen here. Step 30. Click within the search box and key in the word castle. 
and then hit the enter key once. Images of castles should fill the right hand side of your screen. Step 32. Select the castle that looks most like this one that I'm circling here. And I've clicked it once. Once you've clicked on the image of this castle, click on the button here where it says insert. Step 34. You will now see the image found in your document as seen here. Step 35. Insert a Google Word Art image by clicking on Insert, Drawing, and then New. 36. After the drawing window opens, click on Actions and Word Art. 37. The drawing window will change and show a dialog box as seen here. 38. Key in Grand Opening of the without quotation marks. So it'll be just like this. 39. Now use Shift Enter to move the insertion point down one space. So you do that by holding down the shift key and tapping the enter key once. And now it's gone down one space. Step 40. Key in the word mystery and then museum. So it'll look just like this where it says grand opening of the mystery museum all the within the dialog box. After keying in those two lines of text, hit the enter key once. That would be step 41. Step 42. The drawing window will change as shown here. Step 43. The text should appear on two lines as seen here. Step 44. Rotate the text by dragging on the blue circle straight down until it shows 180 as seen here. Once you see the numbers 180, let go of the mouse and grand opening of the Mystery Museum will be upside down. Step 45. The text will appear upside down. 46. Click on the blue button that says Save and Close. Step 47. You will be sent back to your open document. You will now notice that it says Grand opening of the Mystery Museum below the castle. Hit the enter key nine times. Step 49. Click once on the image of the castle. It should become highlighted as seen here. Step 50. Drag the blue circle which is above the image straight down to it shows the number 180 as seen here. Once you see 180 let go of the mouse. Step 51 the image of the castle should appear upside down. Step 52 hit the tab key once. You'll notice that the insertion points jumps to the next cell. Step 53. Hit the enter key five times and move the insertion point down within the second cell. 54. Insert an image of a museum by clicking on Insert, Image, and Search the Web. Fifty-five. The insert image side window should open on the side as seen here. Click within the search box and key in the word museum. And then hit the enter key once. That was step 57. Step 58. The images uh, should load as shown here on my screen. 
59. Select the museum that most looks like this image right here. I'm circling it here for us. Once you've found that image, click on it once and then step 60, click on the insert button. 61, you will now see the image within your document. Step 62, insert a Google Word Art image by clicking on Insert, Drawing, and then New. 63, after the drawing window loads, click on Actions, Word Art. 64, the drawing window will change and have a dialog box as seen here. Step number 65, key in discover the mini mysteries. Explanation mark. Sixty-six. After keying in the text, discover the many mysteries, hit the enter key once. The drawing window will change as seen here for steps number 67. 68. Rotate the text by dragging the blue circle straight down till you see the numbers 180 as I'm showing here. And let go once you see 180. 69, the text should appear upside down after releasing the mouse clicker. Step number 70, click on the blue button that says save and close. Step number 71, you should be sent back to your document. Step number 72, click once on the image of the museum that's in the center of your document. Step 73, Drag the blue circle that's above this image straight down till you see the number 180 and let go of the mouse clicker when you see the number 180 as seen here. Step 74. The image should appear upside down in your document. Step number 75. Hit the tab key once. This will cause the insertion point to jump to the next cell. 76. Hit the enter key five times to move the insertion point down on the third cell. Step number 77. Insert an image of a curator by clicking on Insert Image and then Search the Web. 78. The insert image side window should open on the right hand side of the screen as shown here. Step number 78. Click within the search box and key in the word curator. Hit the enter key once after keying in curator and now you should see curators. So step number 80. Images of curators should load in a moment or two. Step number 81. Select the image of the curators that looks like this. The very first one there. After clicking on that image, step number 82, click on the blue insert button found in the lower portion of your screen. 82, you will be now sent back to your open document. Step number 84, insert a Google Word Art image by clicking on insert, drawing, and then clicking on new. Step number 85. As soon as it loads, click on actions and word art. Step 86. The drawing window will change like this with a dialog box. Step number 87. Key in have a guided tour. Explanation mark. 88. After keying in that text that says have a guided tour, hit the enter key once. 89. The drawing window will now show have a guided tour as seen here. 
Step number 90. Rotate the text by dragging the blue circle down at the top of the text to the bottom as seen here. When you see 180, let go of the mouse clicker. 91, it will now appear upside down. Step number 92, click on the blue save and close button. Step 93, you should now be sent back to your document. 94, click once on the image of the curator. Step number 95, drag the blue circle that's above the image straight down to the bottom and let go when you see the number 180. Step number 96, the image should now appear upside down. Step number 97, hit the tab key once to jump to the next cell. Step number 98, hit the enter key seven times and move the insertion point down on the first cell of the second row as seen here. Step number 99, insert an image of a map by clicking on insert, image, and then search the web. Step number 100, the insert image side window should open on the right hand side of your screen. Step number 101, key in the words street map Dallas. Hit the enter key once. Step 102. Images of street maps should load in a moment or two. Step number 103. Select the image that looks most like this one. Once you've found it, click it. Step 104. And then click on the blue insert button. Step 105. You will now see the image in your document. Step 106. Insert a Google Word Art image by clicking on insert drawing and then new. Step 107. After drawing window loads, click on actions and then word art. Step 108. The drawing window will change as seen here. Step 109. Key in 1400 Martinez Street. Step 110. After keying in the text, hit the enter key once. Step 111. The drawing window will change as seen here. Do not rotate this text. Take your mouse and click on the blue button that says save and close. Step 112. You should be sent back to your document. Step 113. Hit the enter key three times. Step 114. Hit the tab key once to jump to the next cell. Step 115. Hit the enter key seven times to move the insertion point down on the second cell of the second row as seen here. Step 116. Center the text by clicking on the center align icon or by using the keyboard shortcut Control Shift E. The insertion point should shift to the center of this cell. Step 117. Key in the following text. Open 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. every day. Hit the inner key twice and key in cost. $10 per adult. And then the next line is $5 for children. Hit the enter key twice and then type in the phone number 555 800 4545. After keying in that text, you'll be ready for step number 118. Hit the tab key once to jump the insertion point to the next cell. Step 119. Hit the enter key seven times to move the insertion point down on the last cell. 
Center the text by clicking the center align icon or by using the keyboard shortcut Control shift e The insertion point should be at the center of the cell. Step 120. Key in the text, see our website at, and then add the colon. As you see, I'm typing it in now. Step 121. Hit the enter key once to lower the insertion point down below these words. Step 122. Insert a Google Word Art image by clicking on Insert, then going down to Drawing, and then clicking on New. Step 123. After the drawing window loads, click on Actions, and then Word Art. The drawing window will change as seen here with a dialog box. Step 125. Key in www.mysterychasers.com into the dialog box as seen here. Step 126. After keying in the text, hit the enter key once. Step 127. The drawing window will change as seen here. 128. Do not rotate this text. Step 129. Change the fill color by clicking on the fill color icon and selecting any color of your choice. Step 130. Click on the blue button that says save and close. You should be sent back to your document. Step 132. Right click within the white area of any cell and a context menu should appear as seen here. Step 133. Click on Table Properties from within this menu. Step 134. The Tables property window should open as seen here. Step 135. Change the table border color to white and then click the OK button. Step 136. The table border should disappear leaving the other text unchanged. Step 137. You may use the shortcut Control-P to print this six-fold card out. And once the document is printed, you may fold it as shown here. So you'll fold it across this line first, and then you'll fold the other ones in secondly. The cover will be with that castle, and you'll create this document as you see here. It's a really nice little six-fold card. The next segment of the lesson is about columns. We created a six-fold card using a table. But another way is to create this card by using multiple columns. To find the column option, click on Format and then down to Columns. And you'll open up as seen here. You may choose the number of columns, their spacing, and the color that of the line that lies in between the columns, as seen here. Our next segment is about add-ons. Google Add-ons lets you do more with your Google Docs and Sheets by adding new useful features such as the ability to sign or fax your docs directly from Google Docs, create a mail merge, or create business cards. Most add-ons are created by third-party developers and found within the Add-on Store. To find the Add-on Store, just click on Add-ons found at the top menu and then click Get Add-ons. Let me demonstrate. Simply click on Add-ons from the top menu and then click on Get Add-ons. A new window will open up showing you thousands upon thousands of nice add-ons. Now you can go through the list and try to find the ones that you need or you can click on the search box and do a search that way. Hopefully you'll find some good ones that you can use in business and in other places. In this lesson, we've covered a number of features found within Google Documents. We've learned how to create a table, creating and customizing and rotating word art. We learned how to rotate images, how to customize the page margins, and we've learned how to work with our columns. Review questions for lesson number eight. If you're taking this class for credit, then take a clean sheet of paper and write your name along the top line. 
After answering the questions found on the next page, turn them in to Mr. Barry. If you're taking this online, you may email me as well the answers. Number one. Under which menu can you find the drawing tool? Question number two. Under which menu can we find the columns tool? Number three, under which menu can you find the page setup tool? Question number four, what is the keyboard shortcut to print a document? Question number five. What is the keyboard shortcut to center the text? Question number six. What does this icon do? And question number seven. What is the name of this icon? Question number nine. What is the name of this icon? It may be seen as this or this and is found near the top of your screen. Wow, we've completed lesson number eight. This has been a very long lesson to actually go through. Uh, the very first five minutes, for example, just to create that first five minutes took about six hours. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, wow. So anyway, on this one here, we've learned so much on Google Docs using the Google Photos and other things there. So if you haven't done so, please click on the that thumbs up there. I really appreciate that. Share the video and comment down below because I love to read your comments. Thank you very much and bye-bye.